Initially, the reason for creating Bristol in the City was um, my sons have been very privileged to have the opportunity to play academy football. And when one of my sons got released um, from one of the academies at the time, I just felt that he needed to come back into something a little bit more than grassroots football. So the reason was initially quite a selfish one. But also what that did was give other kids an opportunity, not just in the surrounding community, but also further afield to be a part of something uh, a little bit more advanced than uh, grassroots football. Philosophies, everybody has different types of philosophies. Um, mine's is quite straightforward, really. It's player first and it's very much about the players. We want the players to be at the centre of everything we do. So we've got good staff, but ultimately um, the players come first and that makes, making sure that they have an environment where they can grow, um, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. So they go away with lots of different types of skills to, that will support them in uh, their journey going forward from a young teenager to, a, to an adult. There's, there's been so many highs with Bristol in the City and so many frustrations uh, with it as well, but we'll talk about the positive bits, obviously. Um, I would say taking kids to Portugal on our regular annual tour that we've done for like five years. We've taken them to something called the Iber Cup, which is quite an elite environment. And I think not just from the football point of view again, but uh, giving kids the opportunity to travel, some of them for the very first time. So you're having a major impact on some of these children's lives. So Wara, um, cheeky chappy as he is, and, and character, um, I always call him a street footballer. You could say anything you want to him, he's still going and playing exactly the same way. Um, there's an element of that still about his game, but that's the exciting bit. But Awara joined us, I think, again about, I would say, 10, 10 years old, and was with us until 16. Right, so Awara spent his time at um, Newport County for two seasons as a scholarship, a scholar, and then at the end of his scholarship program, didn't have an offer from Newport. So he took the opportunity at the time um, to, um, I think Brian brought him into Bristol City um, for a trial, and the rest is history. Yeah, I had a really good time at Vic, you know. Um, obviously, Patrick was there, he encouraged, he encouraged me a lot, really, to always do well. There was a coach there called Ryan as well and he would also help me a lot throughout my time at Vic. Yeah, the new deal at Bristol City, I was really buzzing with it. Um, you know, it was a reward for the season that I've had really because I've been on loan to League Two, came back and I got recalled back uh, in January and made my debut for the first team, stuff like that. So yeah, it just shows how the club value me really and yeah, makes me feel good. It's a dream come true, you, you know. Every kid dreams about being a professional football player. And, you know, sometimes you just, I think I need to not take things for granted really and really just appreciate and suck it all in really and then enjoy every moment that I have here. I'd say the environment at Bristol in the city, you know, the environment, it's so, it's so good. Like, it's very encouraging. You know, you can express yourself, you can be yourself there, and that's really key. There are many ex-professional coaches at Vic as well, and many uh, Bristol City coaches at Vic as well that have come from Vic to City as well. So I think, yeah, they're trying to create that professional environment, and you can see it when you go there.